I have just one question for you. Are you tired of always being a noob? Are you tired of always missing your shots like the little potato that you are? Hmm? Isn't that right, you little potato? It's okay. I understand. Believe me, I really, really, truly do understand. If there is anyone on planet Earth that understands about being the single most worst timefall player known to mankind, let me tell you. <laughs> it's me. I remember, like, going back onto YouTube way back in the days, um, two and a half years ago when I first started playing this game, I remember I would see so many people flying around uh, being just doing the craziest things, and I would be like, how do I do that? So I would go onto YouTube, right, and I would search up videos, how do I get good at this game? What's the big deal? What is everyone doing that I'm not? So, and I would come across some really, really good videos namely the movement tutorials but that's the thing i would find movement tutorials really really good movement tutorials but they it would just be good movement tutorials and anything else would be really really bad in my honest opinion because now this game's core mechanic it is movement it is but there's so much more to it like aiming um positioning and all the fun nitpicky mechanics, all of that stuff. And what I generally find is that any video that moves out beyond talking about movement and into these topics, they're, they're incredibly vague. And I feel like the professional players could do a little bit of a better job uh, passing on information to the younger, less experienced players on how to master these topics to become a good pilot. And so that's what we're going to be doing here today. I'm going to hopefully try and clear some stuff up to teach you guys how you can become master pilots, such as <laughs> myself and countless others. So, yeah. Now, before I get into this video, I would like to say that the way these tips, the, this tutorial is formatted, it's not going to be like the vague philosophical approach to how to be good at Titanfall that most tutorial makers seem to go in that direction <laughs> hey guys welcome to my to my titanfall t tutorial uh, so uh, for this video uh, uh, don't forget to uh to move around and, uh, and don't forget to shoot shoot your gun <laughs> oh! yeah no the uh the the way these tips are going to be structured in this video, it's going to be in a very do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that, unless you're on this map, then do that kind of deal, if you kind of get what I mean. You know, tips that practically have n more practicality to them, like, rather than, like I said, the uh, vague philosophy. And so, yeah, if you're not a fan or too keen on that method of giving off tips or tricks for tutorial videos then i strongly recommend that you click off this video because this is not the video for you but other than that yeah here we go let's get started Alrighty, now for this part of the video believe it or not this may or may not be the hardest for most of you to swallow but we need to talk about that loadout and so essentially there is a given set comp loadout that a lot of high tier pilots and comp uh, pilots prefer to use in order to maximize optimize their kills and so that's basically what this part of the video is going to be about we're going to be talking about how you can make your loadout to be more like the professional players and what they do that most people don't now before we get into this uh i must apologize that uh there is a little bit of del there might actually i don't know there might be a delay between my commentary and the what you see on screen i promise you what you're seeing and what i'm saying are happening at the same exact time that they're being recorded but what they're when they're being processed however i cannot necessarily say that's the same thing so i do apologize if it starts getting a little disorienting but yeah that with that being said, let's get into the first part of your loadout. So, now, so yeah, 
I know what a lot of you are going to say. Well, not necessarily a lot of you. Uh, I mean, a lot of you uh, comp players who may have stumbled across this video are going to say, Oh, Nick, the assault rifles, namely the first two. I'm not going to say their name. We all know what I'm talking about. They're the best. They're the best guns. And you know what? You're right. They are the best guns. They're the... The, they are the single most best guns in the game for the comp play style. I, didn't, I don't deny that. But at the, why don't you stick around till the end of the video and I'll explain just exactly why I don't want high tier pilots using this gun or people looking to become high tier pilots using this gun. But so with that being said, we're going to move into the submachine gun category because I love submachine guns. They fit the elite play style almost just as well as the R201 and the R101. And so, what we have here are your two good day guns and your two bad day guns. Now, your bad day guns, these are your Volt and your R97. And I say bad day because, well, it's exactly what the name entails. Oop, I just hit my desk. I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> but yeah, these are your guns for your bad days everyone has bad days even the good pilots no <laughs> including myself believe it or not because you're going to be first person shooting so volt volt has really good accuracy volt has the best hip fire accuracy in the game and later on in the tutorial we will be getting into why that's actually important but for now the volt has the best hip fire accuracy in the game r97 R97 hip fire, pretty accurate, but it has the best hip fire aim assist in the game. Really, really good gun. Combine that with its enormous rate of fire, you're gonna be hitting your shots for days with this gun. I really, really enjoy. Even when I'm having a good day, I enjoy using this gun. Same thing goes for the Volt. They're both, they're they're both good guns to use, but they're amazing guns if you're having a bad day. You know strongly strongly recommend them now alternator and car smg best guns for good days these are your good day guns alternator dps is off the charts if you learn if you can learn to tap fire it car hands down it, it has the it just has the best hip fire it has almost the accuracy of the volt hip fire while having almost the aim assist values of the r97 and you combine those two to get a gun with a really really good hip fire ability i love hip firing this gun this is such a good gun to hip fire as a matter of fact i don't ads with this gun at all but that's just me if you want ads this gun that's perfectly fine again we'll be talking all about it later on in the video but r9 r97 Volt, they're good. They're bad day guns. Alternator, car, they're your uh, they're your good day guns. Now people say the alternator has the best hip fire in the game, and I just want I just want to cover this very quickly. Um, the alternator, I, I cannot say that's accurate at all. The alternator does not have the best hip fire in the game. It's a gun you're only supposed to hip fire with. Now, just because it's a gun you're only supposed to hit fire with, that doesn't necessarily mean it has the best hip fire in the game. It's just it just simply means don't ADS with this gun, because its ADS is terrible. You you should probably be ADSing like one out of every ten kills, maybe even less than that. Again, I'm not too entirely sure. I'm not I don't ADS this gun at all. But yeah, you're you're supposed to be hip firing this gun, but just because hip firing is the only option that just do that doesn't necessarily mean it has the best hip fire in the game so yeah just thought i'd clear that up real quick car has in my opinion the best hip fire in the game Alrighty, now that we're talking about the guns i figured why don't we just move on next over to the attachments why not this is where we start getting into the opinion section opinions part of this uh tutorial um a lot of uh you comp players who run across this video are going to say oh nick extra ammo is clearly the way to go uh, <laughs> you know what maybe that's right but me opinion my me personally i prefer having speed loader on my gun all the time i always make sure i have speed loader on my gun if yeah and now 
extra ammo, extra ammo does pair with speed loader really, really well. But I want to open you guys up to a new concept. Tactical. Tactical is amazing, especially if you're um, especially if you're that person who's in that range where you get like maybe 15, 20 kills a game. Put on tactical. I promise you that 15 to 20 kills a game will blast up blast up to like 30 kills a game maybe 25 to 30 seriously um the reason why i don't really recommend tactical to uh lesser skilled players is because you're not really gonna be killing as many people as often is what i'm trying to say and so the benefits of tactical won't by, by the time you do kill someone uh your tactical will probably already be you know replenished but if but if you're in that range with 15 to 20 kills then chances are you're going to be killing people enough during the match where it can greatly uh, drastically affect the rate at which your um a tactical replenishes so yeah if you're that kind of person definitely check out tactical but if you're just now starting out then go with extra ammo and and no not that not that not that we'll get into that soon but um, extra ammo and speed loader. Now, the reason why I don't recommend gun ready or quick swap is that they're good. Don't get me wrong; they are quite all right. But they're just, that's the thing; they're just all right. In the, in my opinion, speed loader and extra ammo are quite okay. Now, <laughs> on the gun runner, don't use gun runner, please, please, please. Do not use gun runner. One of the best Titanfall players that. I know among one of the best has stated if you use Gunrunner you are severely crippling what you are capable of. Gunrunner it's it's good but that's the thing it's only good to a certain extent like if you can learn to slide hop you can shoot your gun anyways while going at the speed of stim. And so Gunrunner just becomes useless. You're by equipping Gunrunner, you're teaching your body, your your muscle memory that it's okay. You don't have to learn to slide hop. But that's that's far from the case. You do need to learn how to slide hop. I cannot stress that enough. And so Gunrunner is essentially crippling you. It's giving you that mindset that y you don't have to learn movement. And it and yeah, that's not that's not good. Don't put on Gunrunner. If you care about your skill, if you care about your mindset, please don't put it on. That's all I have to say. Alrighty, now we're going to go over this really quickly because this loadout section part of the video is getting really long. And we still have another part to cover. Um, so we're going to go over this really quickly. Here's your ordinances. Frags are... It's either frags, fire stars, or arc grenades. Those are your three primary ones. Arc grenades are really good if you're using grenadier weapons, in my opinion. Uh, I know people say grav star is the best, but that's the thing. I generally find if I shoot my grenadier weapon at someone who's in a grav star, the projectile just moves and rotates around them, and it doesn't really kill them. Whereas arc grenade, it just slows them down, and it makes them easier to hit. That's just my opinion, though. So if you're using grenadier weapons, go ahead, use arc grenade. I strongly recommend it. Uh, frag grenades, don't use these as a primary weapon. Please, please, please. That's really, really annoying, seeing people use these as a primary weapon. These are simply and purely for if someone's behind the cover and your linear traveling bullets can't curve around that co cover, so you throw that frag grenade, you kill them, that's perfectly fine. Go ahead and do that. Uh, Firestar, very good at annoying titans and annoying pilots, so yes, definitely, definitely good. Gravstar, my opinion, the most annoying thing in the game, because a movement, a game based on movement, and you have something that essentially cripples movement, yeah, that can definitely be fine, go ahead, use that. Um, Satchel's best titan killers in the game, like, if you hate titans, equip these things, titans won't, won't come anywhere near you, they'll think twice. And electric smoke, yeah, don't don't use electric smoke. Please, don't use electric smoke. I'm not going to explain why it's bad. It should already be uh, quite evident why it's bad. So yeah, but long story short, fire stars, frag grenades, arc grenades. They're your main, they're your main pick. And uh, grav stars, it's, it's very close to arc, arc grenades in my opinion, but yeah. 
Okay, here we go. And so this is the last part of the loadout section of this video. This loadout section has been long as hell, but let me tell you, your loadout is everything. I promise you. This is the, the, uh, every, every last minute spent put into this section of the video is all worth it. Your loadout is so important. And so with that being said, we're getting into the last part. Here we have the tacticals. Yes, the, gr the glorious tacticals. So how do I put this? Hmm. Uh, stim or grapple? Yeah, uh, stim or grapple is the only tacticals that you should be using if you plan on taking a game seriously. While at the same time, but they also offer a lot of fun. Here's the th what I find. Grapple is more so meant for uh, fun, but it does have some practicality um, comp player use to it. A lot of it, actually. Whereas stim, it's more serious based people who want to take the game more seriously less casually than grapple players but while still having a little bit of more of an advantage but again i just generally think that grapple and stim they're they 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 just can't be compared it's like comparing apples to oranges they are not neither is better than the the other Obviously, grapple is better than stim when it comes to uh, capture the flag, but I'm not teaching you guys how to be good at capture the flag. I'm teaching you guys how to get lots of kills and to be a generally overall good pilot. So, you know, there's a million grapple guides out there. Go ahead, look at them. I'm not going to be go covering movement too much in this video. As a matter of fact, barely at all. And stim, you know, stim, my hint of advice for stim, it acts as a really good get out of jail free card. More so better than phase shift, actually. People say phase shift is the ultimate get out of jail free card. That is not true. I truly do believe stim is the better get out of jail free card. But if you want to keep using stim, go ahead. I mean, there's a reason why it was the meta way back in the days of Timefall Comp past. But yeah, stim or grapple is your way to go nowadays. Uh, and so, yeah. And so yeah, as for the other tacticals, Cloak and AWOL for Sweats, um, Hollow Pie is for Memers, uh, Phase Shift is for people who can't let go of the past and don't know how to keep up with the meta, and uh, yeah, Pulse Play is for Normies. Anyways, that concludes the tactical section of this video. Let's go see if we can move on. Controls, let's talk about them. All right, so right off the bat, auto sprint. Uh, I know your controller has a million inputs for movement. That's what joysticks offer, but you should not be moving slowly at all. If you want, it's either move as fast as possible or stay still to help steady your aim. So there is no in between movement, is what I found. So auto sprint all the way. You should not be using the different inputs for speed on your joystick. Hold the rodeo, you know. I personally like friendly because, you know, I generally do not like it when Titans get in my way when I'm doing my uh, my pilot things, you know. No one likes that. And so I just have it just for friendly so that way, you know, I don't rodeo onto them automatically. Well, at the same time, I'm able to rodeo onto uh, enemy Titans at very easily without having to hold, worry about holding on the X button. And sometimes it can be, let me tell you, it can uh, be... <laughs> pretty daunting to uh, hold on to that X button because of the way it works, but that's besides the point. Alright, here we go. Main part, take notes. Um, evolved control layout. Um, so essentially what evolved is, it allows for easier slide hopping and air strafing. Um, as a matter of fact, it's like turning your controller into an elite controller. I would go as far to say... <laughs> <laughs> that evolved control layout on the default controller is actually better than the elite controller coming from someone who has used both let me tell you i i just saved you all 120 bucks yeah <laughs> well again elite controller simple go to your controller settings set it to evolve you'll be able to slide hop so so easily the one thing about Evolve Controls, though, that I must say to all my Grapple users out there, I, coming from a fellow, someone who used to be a Grapple main, I generally find Evolve Controls, it's harder, to, it's, it's something about it for Grapple is just harder 
for me to get down. I, I'm sure there there are millions of people out there. Not millions, though. This is Titan Bolt we're talking about. I'm sure there's four people out there <laughs> who have managed to get the evolved grapple layout uh, sh whole shtick thing down. So, uh, crouch button, have it as toggle. Uh, aim button, hold the ADS. Yeah, have that definitely as hold the ADS. Um, sensitivity, okay. Now, this is where you can start adding in your own little personal recipe. This is more opinionated as f the just the sensitivity appears to be. Uh, let's start. <laughs> but, yes. Now, on to the sensitivity. Uh, you can have the sensitivity, whatever it works for you. Everyone knows what works best. Me, personally, I love having low 2 and default 3 for ADS. Low 2 because I'm someone who enjoys using hip fire a lot. If you're someone who enjoys hip firing, I recommend the lower or default sensitivity. Um, response curve. Take notes. Important, important, important. Um, steady or fine aim. So if, essentially what steady is, is multiple inputs uh, for all those different velocities that your enemy players might be traveling. And then fine aim is essentially what it is, is uh, two inputs. It, there are two speed inputs for your uh, for fine aim. You're turning really slowly or turning really fastly. That's what fine aim essentially is. Um, steady, I prefer steady is for most people. Um, fine aim, uh, I generally find that when my hands are a little shakier than usual, fine aim is actually really good for people who have a uh, shaky hands. So there's that. Um, dead zone small, uh, inverted look. Uh, if you're if you're into that, go ahead, knock yourself out. Uh, movement end zone small, vibration needs to be off, absolutely, definitely. Um, and advanced look controls, well, if, if that's your thing, you go ahead, you do that, you all know. But anyway, so here are the things that absolutely, in my opinion, you must copy down in order to be good. Evolved, control, evolved layout, crouch, toggle, aim button, hold the ADS. Um, response curve either steady or fine aim. Dead zone has to be small. Absolutely, absolutely has to be small. Um, uh, movement dead zone has to be small. Vibration off. Anything else? Um, feel free to customize to your own pleasure. But that is the control section of the video. Hey, what's going on? Okay, so. For this part of the video, it's going to be really quick. I'm going to try my hardest to make this as quick as possible. So, uh, yeah, for your equipment, um, I already covered this uh, in the previous section. Uh, all you really need is a, uh, a default controller. And, <coughs> my bad, excuse me. And we're going to, you're going to be needing, uh, I recommend a pair of good headphones. Uh, these are like cheap $30, $40. I can't remember, but they, they're really good, like, 30 to 40 dollar headphones will do perfectly fine that's that's what i recommend uh don't go over the top on your headphones uh but yeah that's and that's really all the equipment that you really need uh and we'll be going on later in on in the video as to why uh headphones are important but yeah all right next part of the video <laughs> Alrighty, so here we go, the aiming part of the video. So, uh, as many of you may know, the way you aim is, well, it's simple. You just look to aim, and that's what a large majority of the player base in Titanfall seems to do. But I'm going to introduce you guys to a new concept to uh, helping improve your aim, and that is the concept of aiming by moving rather than looking. Now, aiming by moving... What this does is it allow it, it still allows you to take you effect of your aim assist, but it's very good for small minute increments. You know, see that? I just sniped that grunt like crazy. What a noob. Wow, that grunt sucks. F and chat for that grunt, alright? So, but anyways, moving by moving is definitely a really, really good concept for you to grasp because it not only does it teach you how to steady your aim up, but it also uh, helps imbue into your mind the concept of moving fast and shooting on the go, all that fun stuff. So yeah, I strongly recommend going into a private match, just aiming by moving rather than looking. So yes, that's the uh, that's the key tip. Lar aim by looking for large increments. Aim by moving for smaller, more precise. And 
uh, yeah. All right, and here we go. We touched briefly into this during the loadout parts of the video, namely during the guns parts, but now we're going to get more in depth into this, and this is a concept that I do not see enough amongst younger pilots, newer pilots, all that stuff. Uh, if you can successfully get down this concept, I promise you your aim will increase drastically, and that is the concept of hip fire in this game. This game has such amazing hip fire, especially with the ARs and the SMGs. The the the, the accuracy that hip fire allows you to achieve is off the freaking charts. You need to be utilizing hip fire so 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 much. I know a lot of you hover noobs, all you ADS dorks are gonna be like, oh my god, no, but you get more accuracy when you look down the sight, so oh, my hover ah God no. <laughs> Guys, please learn to hip fire. Uh, essentially what you're doing is you get to keep all the accuracy, not necessarily the aim assist, but if you can get practice good enough, you learn to you learn to let go of the extra aim assist ADS gives you, but you get the same accuracy as ADSing, while without severely crippling your situational awareness. And uh, we'll get more into this later on uh, in the next part of the video, actually, but your situational awareness is everything and essentially what hip fire does is it allows you to shoot your gun accurately in this game namely without crippling your situation situational awareness something that's very very key in regards to positioning and um getting the advantage on the other player seeing them before they see you which we'll go over in the next part of the video but yes i strongly strongly recommend um just get get rid of the sights on your gun and go around and just keep the mentality that you can't ADS for a couple games. And then, you, once you get hip firing down, like o only hip fire, and then you, then you effectively combine it with ADSing and hip firing, then you will truly, truly be able to maximize uh, what you're capable of when you aim. So, yes, uh, that's hip firing. Also, another thing about hip firing is that it's very, very important in dogfights. Uh, so essentially what dogfights is, it's, uh, it's pilot terminology, I mean like actual real life pilot terminology for people who fly planes and stuff, people who get into fights. Well, I just apply, I just, it's the same terminology. You have pilots who are going into the air, flying around, so yeah, that's, that's what dogfights are. Pilots, Titanfall pilots, of course flying around in the air and a hip fire is so good for those scenarios where you're you're in the air and other pilots in the air you can just blast them away with hip fire i promise you if you're AD, if you're adsing uh, during situations where you're in the air and your uh enemy is also in the air chances are whoever's hip firing is gonna have the advantage so that's another thing that you need to take note about hip firing yeah so, so yes that concludes the aiming part of this tutorial we are going to move on to the positioning part of this tutorial, which I think may just very well be the most important part, so I'll see you there. Alright, and here we go, the final, last part of the video. So, we're going to be covering um, positioning in this part of the tutorial. And uh, so, essentially, what if I were to tell you that positioning was the most integral part of being a good pilot? What if I were to tell you that positioning was actually the, the difference between being a uh, stinky, uh, poopy head pilot? You're a poopy head. The fuck you say to me, you little shit! When we spell it out, you're a poopy head! And being a master skillful pilot that's capable of dropping 30, 40 kills every single game. Well, that's exactly the case. Positioning is everything. It's actually more important than controls, loadout, um, aiming. All that stuff can be negated if you can just nail down positioning. And so that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. So... First off, you need to get down that speed. Speed is so important in positioning and we'll be talking about that later on. But, so, right now I'm going to talk to you guys how you can maximize your speed and that is using a little tip called slide hopping. 
So slide hopping is exactly what the name entails. You slide and then you hop. So it's actually what I'm doing right now. This is slide hopping. And so I'm gonna tell you guys how you can do that. This is incredibly important. If you're not slide hopping, you're not a master pilot. I just need to, t I need to get that out of the way. I'll explain why, but just trust me on this one. If you're not slide hopping, you're not being a master pilot. So what you wanna do is, it's really simple run all right you're running right very simple gain any type of momentum you can preferably wall running but you can you can run also so you're running and then what you want to do is you want to jump all right got that down run build up velocity any way you can jump okay now what you want to do is once you do that you run and then jump and hit crouch after, one after the other. Do not hit them at the same time. Jump, then crouch. Jump, then crouch. This should be within a millisecond of each other. Not at the same time, though. Because if... Yeah. If you do, you'll just end up crouching. And it'll cancel out the jump. So, yeah. Jump, then crouch. Very simple. So, run. Jump, then crouch. And boom. The moment you hit the ground, hit jump and crouch again. And you will be going at the speed of stim. This is so amazing. This is actually one of the best mechanics in this game, in my opinion. It's so easy to master down, and that frag grenade just inadvertently gave me a little boost. So yes, that's uh, really nice. All right, and here we go. And for the next part of this section, actual positioning. I'm going to be hitting you with a lot of tips really quickly, so be sure to take notes. Okay, so first tip. Always make sure you are always running on a wall. If you're not running on a wall, you're going slow. You're going slow, you're getting dead. All right? Simple enough. Next tip. Always make sure you're looking at your mini-map. Using your mini-map is so important for telling where any players are. I'm assuming you all know how to read a mini-map. I'm fairly sure it's pretty straightforward. You know, bars at the edge of the map means shooting going off far away. Little pie section of the mini-map means uh, they're shooting enemies nearby in the direction that the pie is pointing towards. Um, and yeah, if a little red circle appears around your player icon, that means there's uh, someone shooting directly at you. So yes, make sure you're looking be between your gameplay and your minimap. Always, always, always. Very important. Next tip, during the initial rush, um, go down the center lane. Uh, always, always go down the center lane. And then halfway down the center lane, uh, try looking for a path to deviate off of, so that way you can get a nice flank. That's also really important. One of my uh, key tips for, getting, uh, for that initial rush, get lots of kills. That's really important. Now, next tip. When you are wall running, always make sure you're running as high as possible. <laughs> if you're running in the middle of the wall, then you're not going to see who's coming up above you, and you're probably only going to be looking at below. Uh, and you could always look up, yes, but that means you have to keep checking up and below you, and that's. And when you're running high, there's only one place you have to check, and that's below you. So if you're running on the wall, always make sure you're running at the very tippity top of that wall. Take the high ground. It's over, Anakin! I have the high ground! Next tip for positioning. Player spawns. Let's talk about them. All right. So essentially, when you're killing a bunch of people, um, players will spawn in a specific area. And... Alright, so in Pilots vs. Pilots, it actually tells you where the enemy spawn is, dominating. denoted by a giant red circle uh, on your mini-map. If you see a giant red circle, if you're playing Pilots vs. Pilots, that's where the enemy is spawning and should probably be hanging out around that area. Now, if you're playing Attrition, uh, you just gotta use your best of knowledge to understand where the pilots are spawning. If you see the pilots are spawning in that area, go and kill them a bunch. Run around that area. Now, Take note, if you kill a bunch of pilots in an area and all your other uh, teammates start going to that area, the spawn will change. So if you're killing a bunch of pilots in one area and all your teammates come over, it's probably best to go change your position because chances are the spawn is also going to change as well. And when you do change your position, be sure to go to the opposite side of the map because when the enemy spawn does change, chances are that's where it's going. So yes, uh, if the enemy spawn does change, go to the opposite side of the map. Boom. Repeat. Rinse and repeat. 
All right, next tip. Avoid going into buildings as much as possible. Uh, so when you go into buildings, you're engaging in close quarters combat, and you never know who might be camped out where in what building, and it's just genuinely like really frustrating. So try and stay out of buildings as much as you possibly can, unless you know absolutely what you're doing. Uh, like say you're running away from someone. Uh. Then yeah, go into a building, take cover, absolutely that's good. But do not ever, ever, ever go searching for pilots inside the buildings. That's how you get yourself killed. So yeah. No. And lastly, the final tip for positioning. Look at your teammates. What are your teammates doing? Chances are your teammates might see something that you don't a large majority of the time. And so they might be shooting at an enemy and just they might die. So yes, look at what your teammates are doing. If you see a teammate death marker, there might be an enemy there. Go there. Try and avenge your teammate. If you see your teammate shooting at something, there might be a pilot there. So always be sure to analyze what your teammates are doing because you never know when someone might see something that you don't. So that's another really important thing. And that is the last tip for today. So that brings a conclusion to the end of this tutorial. All right, and so that concludes it. So early on, I had said how I was going to explain why I do not enjoy high level players using the R201 and the R101. And the answer to that is really simple. Um, the R101 and the R201 to elite players is like the Spitfire to noobs, you know, just like how the Spitfire fits the new gameplay too well. The R201 and the R101 fit the elite playstyle so well, and the fact of the matter is, on console, on PC the guns are fine, but on console, the guns are just straight up broken in the hands of an elite player. I do not enjoy seeing elite players use these guns because you cannot comprehend how good these guns are. People say the car SMG has good ADS. Those people have never seen someone ADS the R101. <laughs> the R101 has the best ADS in the game without a doubt. In fact, the matter is, there's no gang around it. The gun is broken in the hands of cop players, so that's just generally why I don't want uh, pilots looking to become elite players using these guns. Um, if you're starting out, you know, go ahead, use them. But once you start becoming that more of an elite pilot, a professional player, people, someone that people will look up to, just ditch the gun for everyone's sake. But yeah, that's the end of the video. I hope you all enjoyed. I enjoyed making this video so, so much. I really hope you guys enjoy it. There's so much more to being an amazing master pilot, but if I were to delve into that, if I were to delve into, into it completely, the video would be like three hours long. So, with that being said, if this video, uh, let's set a goal. Well, uh, 10 likes. Why not? If the video gets 10 likes, I will make a second part of this tutorial uh, explaining further how you can be a better pilot, but this is essentially the groundwork. This is really what you need to get started on becoming a really good pilot. But that being said, yeah, I hope you all have an amazing day. Thank you for donating your time.